Hey everyone, hope you're all doing really well. I've got a bit of a data share video for you today, combining with a kind of a tutorial, if you will, where we're going to tackle some heart nebula data, which I captured just a few nights ago. It was around about five hours, taken with an Aries M Pro camera, which is a 533 mono sensor, through my Red Cat 51 and some 6 nanometer filters. We should hopefully be able to go from having completely unprocessed images to something that looks like this within the course of about 15 to 20 minutes. So if you'd like to follow along, check the link in the description box down below to my Google Drive where I'm hosting this kind of folder for you right here. It should be called something similar to this. And uh, basically get that downloaded, get yourself PixInsight or any other processing uh, software you want to use if you just want to go solo with this rather than follow along. And uh, let's get going. So drag it all out, open everything up, and as you can see, all the tools that I want have opened up also at the same time. Now, when you want to load these in, you can also instead manually find them from your process icons, load process icons, then point it to them. You'll probably load in on the wrong workspace. So you are going to need to right click, select all icons and then arrange icons and it should pull them onto your currently active workspace. Now let's get on with this. So I'm going to want hydrogen in the top left in my particular case, as that's just what I'm used to doing. So I'm going to click the hydrogen, click window and click tile. At this point, I'm going to make sure everything's viewable. I'm going to open up SDF and I'm going to apply a basic SDF stretch to all three images just so we can analyze exactly what's going on. As you can see, a couple of problems. There is some stacking artifacts that are some actual black borders as well left over from stacking where it's not able to kind of complete missing data uh, alongside the common areas. So we're going to want to get rid of those straight away. So I'm going to select, in this case, just sulfur. Any of them will do. And I'm going to use dynamic crop. So just pulling in from the corners. Just a little bit until you can see all of those black borders are gone. Uh, nothing remains, no more stacking artifacts. That should be good to go. Now, before you just hit tick, you want to drag that across to your other two images in this case as that's going to make sure everything's then cropped once you hit take to the exact same dimension same common area which is going to be really important for processing just a little bit later on now next up it's not too bad on this particular image but all the same i'm going to show you how to get rid of a gradient as you can see particularly on this oxygen the bottom left is a little bit darker than the top right so there's a bit of a and a gradient going across the image. It's also kind of visible on the sulfur, not too much on the HA. So for this task, I'm going to use DBE. I want to do it actually on the oxygen first. So I'm going to make sure that window is selected. It's going to become a dynamic window now. The correction I'm going to look for, uh, it should be a subtraction. I will normalize it. And in this case, I'm just going to throw away the background model. If you're having trouble, getting this done satisfactorily then you may want to keep that background model so you can kind of analyze what's going on when you actually run dbe now i've just made this a little bit bigger just for the sake of demonstration on youtube i didn't need to do this and now i'm going to start placing a few points for this so i'm being careful not to place them you know on bright areas of nebulosity things like that you don't have to be too desperately careful but still you know why not take that extra few milliseconds to make sure they're well placed if you can so that looks probably about right to me there's just 13 points there as it is a very simple gradient we don't need a uh, an overly dense layout of sample points i'm going to go ahead and hit execute on that i'm going to stf that window and make sure the gradient is gone which it is it's successfully got rid of it so it, we can probably safely say it's a decent model in which case i'm just going to take this window before we close the dynamic view and drag it onto a fresh area on the workspace. Go ahead and close down DBE now. We can also minimize the non dbe window. Just move that away for the sake of clarity. And now I'm going to use this tool just dragged and dropped across to the other two images. So as you can see, it has worked well. It's gone rid of the gradient two on the sulfur. So the model was valid for that rid of that image too and then i'm going to try it also on the ha this may not work as well but why not experiment uh, and actually it looks okay so we are going to keep that so now we've got three images active in our workspace the hydrogen alpha the oxygen three and the sulfur two all with the suffix of dbe 
behind them so we know uh, we're on the right ones at this point in time now next up i'm going to want to linear fit all of these images to the sulfur channel is that's kind of how i like to do it these days so i'm going to select the sulfur channel uh hit linear fit and now select it as a reference image so choose the right one uh sulfur to dbe in this case and now i'm going to drag that arrow over to the ha and the oxygen 3 leaving the sulfur 2 alone as we're trying to fit those over two channels to it don't worry about it. it's kind of just going a bit gray there we are going to restretch this and make uh sure that nothing's gone awry with the data and it all looks absolutely fine so at this stage now uh you could start processing with some of the uh the russell Chroman tools if you have them you know the blur exterminators noise exterminators etc but in my case i'm actually going to put them all together first so i'm going to hit lrgb combination and i am going to use ha as a kind of a luminance channel if you don't wish to do this which is absolutely fine just untick the l and go ahead with the standard sho mapped to rgb but as i said i am going to use ha as an l so i'm going to make sure it's selected uh, h alpha dbe in the l channel and now we want the sulfur dbe in r right there hydrogen dbe in g and oxygen 3 dbe in b so as you can see ha acting as our luminance and then sho mapped to rgb for that standard hubble palette kind of outcome i'm going to go ahead and apply global give this a quick stretch and see what we're working with so obviously one of the first things you're going to know is that the stars have gone kind of horrible and magenta look like the burned out cores and all sorts of stuff don't panic we are going to be able to kind of deal with all of this now i'm going to get rid of it just by using a script called correct magenta stars i've had it for years great script we we'll go ahead and execute that and that looks like it's all fixed the star colors look uh nice as nice as sho stars can uh they're not rgb stars that's for sure but they look absolutely fine to me and at this point now i'm going to probably take this image into the non-linear phase of processing so this would be your last chance really to use blur exterminator if you wanted to use it i'm just going to skip over it for the sake of brevity in this tutorial for a real image i would absolutely use it so i've just cancelled my stf view on this and i'm going to open up the image now in ghs this is another great 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 tool and you really should get yourselves this and get used to using it i've had better stretching results with this than anything else generalized hyperbolic stretch has been changing the game for me it's going to open up a preview window and i'm just going to select somewhere around in one of the corners as that should probably be background and start to apply some stretch factor you notice when i selected one of those corners i also hit send to sp that's using that now as our symmetry point the point through which the histogram is going to try and uh, pivot if you will i'm just going to pull across our stretch factor a little bit alter the local intensity now if it's not looking the way you want uh don't panic you can always just play around with that symmetry point that would be the biggest one to play with at this point so in my case a background region not giving me the results i'm looking for so i may need to select a region of very weak nebulosity instead experiment i'm gonna try slightly stronger nebulosity in this case let's get me closer to the results i want especially when i strengthen the local intensity around that symmetry point to try with just a couple more symmetry point placements and i think that looks good for a first step so we are just going to settle all that and apply reset the whole tool and now as you can see the whole background is way too bright so i'm going to use another transformation mode in ghs and that's linear mode and i'm simply going to use this just by dragging the left hand side of that histogram window closer to the left hand foot of the histogram distribution thusly set in the black point so as you can see you don't want to go too far and start clipping you don't want to keep it too far left because the image starts to look a bit silly and then kind of really gray but around about here in my case looks good we know we are going to brighten this a little bit further with some more stretching so i've gone a little bit darker than i usually would 
reset the whole tool and now I'm going to go ahead and apply another kind of pass of GHS. This time I'm going to start off with a uh, symmetry point set towards the leading edge of the histogram curve right at the bottom and just see how this works for us. So that's working really well actually. Uh, you'll know now that the stretch factor only has to be moved a little bit for very large changes to start to become apparent in that preview window. So it's time to exercise a little bit of caution and maybe not have to do this all in one. I am just going <laughs> to kind of go with it again for the sake of not wasting your time. Um, that's probably looking quite a lot closer to what I want. So we're going to go with that. And I think at that I'm going to close GHS and say that it is probably now time to take the stars out of this image. I'm satisfied with the stars. They look fine. So uh, we are going to go ahead with that. So for this purpose, star exterminator in my case. I want to generate a star image because I'm going to put them back in. So I need them. And I'm going to use unscreen mode rather than just a, uh, a standard removal. I want to screen the stars back in rather than just add them. All right, so it's finished now. Those stars have been removed really nice and cleanly. We've got a, two separate discrete images, a stars image and a starless. In my case, I am going to go ahead and remove the magenta from this stars image once again. You may not need to do this, uh, but in my case, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Can't do me no harm. And now we can continue on processing on the actual main starless image. As you can see, the nebulosity is really popping out of this thing. Now we do have a bit of noise to deal with as it wasn't really a very long integration. So I am going to use noise exterminator on this, but not too aggressively strong, uh, around about 0.6 or so, anywhere around there in my case. But we're going to do the job just fine. And there you have it. As you can see, if I just cycle that back and forth so hopefully you can see that through youtube's compression it's done a wonderful job of getting rid of the rest of that noise now you could process manually from here on out and try to get your colors more accurately uh, aligned with the sho palette from what they currently are which is anything but uh, but in my case my friend bill blanchon recently released a narrowband normalization Really great tool, uh, so I'm going to use that. So I'm going to change the palette in the side of the tool to SHO. Make sure I've got the right window selected, open up a preview so I can see exactly what I'm doing in real time and start making the necessary adjustments. So I want a little bit of SCNR to this. In my case, I don't really like to use full SCNR strength on uh, Hubble palette images, as I do kind of like to see a bit of green. It adds a nice degree of tonality these types of images I think. I did want to boost the O3 just a little bit and the Sulfur 2 slightly more considerably. So around about there is probably looking pretty good. I'm going to use preserve mode. Just going to check it against HA mode as well in terms of the, uh, the lightness. Preserve mode looks the best to me right now. Go ahead and apply. Now that's done at this point. Any regions that you think may be getting a little bit out of hand in terms of brightness and things, you could, if you wish, just create a range mask, which I'm going to do for the sake of demonstration. So process and mask generation range selection. Again, on the correct image, I'll use screening mode so I can see what's going on. And just by moving the lower limit across to the side, we're going to isolate the very bright brightest parts of the image, the things that's going to burn out first so um, increasing that smoothness up a little bit so we get a nice blended edge it's gonna do nicely and I'll demonstrate to you how we're gonna use this thing to try and bring down the intensity of particularly the fish head and melot 15 itself right at the core of the heart so I'll use this as my mask and just using curves in my case I'm just gonna pull down ever so slightly a little bit further than I actually want to, to be honest with you, because I am going to stretch this further in just a moment, so it's going to go back up in intensity. A touch. Well, that's done the job. May look a little bit strange now, but it won't in just a moment, I promise you. So uh, that will do. We can go ahead and get rid of that mask. A quick, a quick operation, but it does 
kind of serve to save an image sometimes if you've not been too careful with your stretching like I haven't throughout the course of this tutorial. So now uh, I'm going to apply with curves once again a little bit of saturation. This is going to aid me in getting the colour masks accurately placed. So just a touch. That'll do. And now when I apply a yellow mask to this, it should be able to really pick out those colours and as you can see it has, it's got a really nice edge to it and I'm going to be able to discreetly select just the regions that I want. So I'm going to use this yellow mask now, curves once again. I'm going to actually try and boost these kind of dimmer orangey regions with some red. Not too much but just a little bit so it starts to change the overall tone towards kind of coppers and golds. And now these kind of leading edges, which are a little bit brighter, a little bit higher in intensity, I want to turn those more towards kind of almost a yellow gold if I can. So to do that, I'm going to up the mid to highs with the green slider at the same time as I've left that uh, red one mid operation. And then I'm going to pull down on the lower end of it, pulling that green into an effective gentle S, if you will. And you can see the effect that that's had. Overall, it's taken us to a much more pleasing palette, I would say, at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. It probably could take that second step, but I think it's a little bit much for my tastes at this particular point in time. I'm finished with that mask too, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. And now I would probably say I'm actually really rather close to being done with this image. So uh, one more pass with curves, this time on just the RGBK overall a little bit of a boost. I'm going to try and do that kind of same S operation, but maybe not quite as severe as before. But you should hopefully see it does just give a little bit of a pop to the image. I will need to just recreate the preview there. Unfortunately, it crashed. If I just cycle back and forth, you can see even a very, very, very subtle S it does have a nice effect. So I think at this point it's time for a final evaluation. Uh, I'm happy still with the black point of the image. I'm happy enough that the brighter regions of the image aren't too badly burnt out. I could always pull them back a bit with further masking round. Uh, but as far as this image goes, I think I'm safe to put the stars back in now and just enjoy it for what it is. A little bit of a quick tutorial effort. So uh, to that end, there are a few different ways to put your stars back in at this point. There are some included tools. If you downloaded the tools from me, uh, you'll have stars, stars and rescreen, which you can just drag over the re respective images. Uh, and that's what I will do for the sake of this. So stars over the stars image, stars over the stars image, and rescreen over any of them. And there you go, the stars have been screened back into that image, leaving us with a pretty nice shot. Colors aren't exactly perfect, exactly where I want them, but still, hopefully you can see that with a little bit more time, a little bit more care, you can really get this to look pretty darn incredible. Uh, the data can be pushed quite far, and as I said, this was my earlier effort where I took quite a lot more time, obviously, processing a lot more care, and came up with a very pretty final image, I would say. And there's no reason that you can't do that too, there was nothing special done to this, no trickery. So um, yeah, that's about it. From me guys, I hope that this has been useful to some of you out there, and if so, please do just leave a little bit of a thumbs up on the video for me, as it really helps, really helps out. So uh, yeah, that's about it. Hope to see you in the next one, and until then, just thank you all so much for your support. Look after yourselves, and clear skies.